On April 22nd of 2017, I started my YouTube channel Craft is Autonomous, and on July 20th of 2020, or 1,185 days later, I reached 5,000 subscribers. So I shared a post on my community tab, seeing if people wanted to see me make my own DIY 5,000 subscribers play button. And I got a lot of really great, sweet comments from you guys. And so I decided I was going to make myself a DIY YouTube play button for reaching 5,000 subscribers. So this first part, I am doing a paper mache. And so I'm going to be using this recipe that I found from Red Ted Art. I will link it down below. So I'm just boiling some water to get that ready. And also, sorry for the dishes in the sink, our dishwasher broke in the middle of the pandemic and that's a really bad time because appliances are really hard to find right now. So then I'm gathering out my materials and I've got some newspaper here and honestly I have no clue where this came from because I don't know anybody who gets the newspaper. But are they really painting the points at hotel? In case you're wondering, they are but only part of it. So anyways, I grabbed some newspaper that I had and I ran it through the paper shredder and I found out that it's really hard to be filming in one hand and trying to run the papers through the shredder with the other hand so I finally had to like set my phone down and fold it up to get it to actually work. But anyways I started running it through the paper shredder and fun fact about me is when I was little I always wanted a paper shredder. I don't know why and then once we got one it was kind of anticlimactic because once you run the first 10 papers through it kind of gets old really fast. But anyways I went ahead and shredded up a bunch of newspaper and then I shut it off and unplugged it to look at the glorious shredded newspaper that I had just created. And at first I was thinking I wasn't going to have enough but then I was like oh wait this is plenty for what I needed and it actually ended up being the perfect amount. So I dumped it into my bowl and right at that moment the teapot started whistling because my water was boiling so I quickly put my bowl with shredded paper onto a hot pad on my table and then I had to run out to the kitchen where it was boiling also you can see where our dishwasher is supposed to be. And then I grabbed the teapot and walked it back into the room and then I realized I didn't have a place to set it down so I had to stop filming for a second to open it. And then I dumped it into my bowl of shredded paper. And then since that wasn't enough to fully submerge all the paper, I went ahead and boiled another pot of water. Same exact process, but this time I was smart and I got out a spoon and I also got another hot pad. And so I used the spoon to just push all the paper into the water and the hot pad was so that way when I brought the teapot in the next time I could set it down to open up the little opening to be able to pour my water out of the teapot. So yeah, I added that to the bowl and at first I wasn't gonna add it all in, but then I was like, you know, this newspaper is really thick and I wanted to make sure there was plenty of water for it to soak in so it could really break down because of course I'm using newspaper, not toilet paper because, you know, pandemic. Anyway, so I let that sit for 24 hours and then the next day it was time to start shredding it and I was really unsure how to get this to work. I decided to use an old blender because my mom has a Vitamix, but I figured I probably shouldn't use that really nice blender for making paper mache. So I put it in the blender, but I had a lot of issues getting it going and I was really afraid I was gonna burn up the blender, but then I just kept adding more water, you know, like you do with smoothies that don't blend. And as I added more water, it finally started blending. So I blended it for probably about two minutes and ended up with this paste. And I really wasn't sure if this was even right or not because the last time I did paper mache clay was in first grade and we did it with toilet paper. So yeah. Then I decided, you know what, let me try this little blender attachment, but all that did was wrap the newspaper around the little piece, so it was back to the blender. And this took forever, but I just blended it for probably about two minutes each time, got it really pulpy, and then I played around with it and squeezed some of the water out to see what the consistency of my pulp was. And again, like I said, I really wasn't sure if I was even doing this right, but it was kind of working out, so I was like, you know what, we're gonna go with it. So then I decided to dirty literally every one of our mixing bowls for this process because I had to strain out the water because like I said, I added a ton of water for in the blender to get it to blend. And so that was a lot of water to strain out. So I used a strainer and I had to push it out and squeeze all the water and that took forever. But then we ended up with a bowl of paper mache that looks about like this. So then I decided to kind of measure out how much paper mache I had and it was really like a bad like just guesstimate but I figured I had about three cups and I decided to follow the three to one paper mache to flour recommendation so I ended up adding a cup of flour in and I tried using that attachment on the blender to see if that could blend the flour in but that didn't work so well so then I was doing it with my hands and that was an extreme workout. Oh my goodness, my arms are hurting so bad afterwards from kneading and squeezing and blending the flour into the paper mache. But after, I think it took me like 10 minutes, I think is how long my footage was. 
and I finally was able to get all the flour mixed in and it was holding its shape and I said, you know what, that's good enough. So then I got out some parchment paper and my camera did not want to focus, sorry about that. But I just got some parchment paper and took my blob of clay and started shaping it on the parchment paper just that way I didn't get it on my table. And basically at this point I realized I was kind of making a giant rock out of the paper mache but I think it kind of turned out cool and it was kind of the look I was going for. I just didn't realize how much of a rock it was going to look like. So once I got it shaped, I took it outside. The weather was so nice that day and I put it outside to dry. It was kind of like drizzly rainy, so it was a little cooler that day. Very, very humid. My cats were like, what is this? And then the minute I walked inside, one of them tried eating it. So that was really fun. But then anyways, while that was drying, I went ahead and got some red yarn and I crocheted a triangle to be the play symbol on the play button. And I actually was playing around with different patterns but I found this super awesome pattern from Yay For Yarn. I'll link that in the description down below and they have a little pattern on how to make a perfect 60 degree equilateral triangle. So I just followed that super simple and cute, weaved in my ends and then I had my nice play button all ready to be added on to the paper mache once it finally dried. But the paper mache took forever to dry, so it took several days. So I finally brought it out back so it could be in the sun because we had some really hot weather. But while that was still drying, I went ahead and decided here's how we're going to incorporate the cardboard into this project. We are going to make a cardboard stand. So I made this little triangle and then added a hook to it and it took forever to cut out because of the curve. And then once I got the first one cut out, I just traced it, cut out a second one, and I tested that they would hold stuff. They did, it worked perfect. So then I hot glued them together and added some extra glue to reinforce it. And that was my little stand. And of course I wanted to paint it so it didn't look like black cardboard. So I just used an apple barrel paint. These are the paints I always use if you watch any of my videos. I love them, they're 50 cents at Walmart, can't beat that. So I painted that and set it outside in the sun to dry. And then also I got really creative and I used a cookie cooling rack to dry my paper mache the rest of the way. I hung it over the edge and used a flower pot to counterbalance it. So basically the sun could be cooking it from the top and the air could go underneath it and dry it. Also my stand dried at this point and so I was able to kind of test it in there. It was all coming together so nicely. So the last thing I needed to do was make myself a little plaque and basically say that this is a play button for Crafters Autonomous for reaching 5,000 subscribers. So I cut out a little rectangle of cardboard and we're going to use a toothpick later on to make it stand up. But then I want it to be really cool looking. So I have this pack of Lipton tea that comes in gold foil. It says that it is so much flavor we had to wrap it. Anyways, I love this gold foil, but the annoying thing was they had their logo all over it. So Lipton, if you're watching this, if you would mind putting your logo on the foil less times, I'd be able to use the foil for a lot more crafting projects. I don't know why I think Lipton will be watching this video, but just in case they come across this video. Anyways, I did find a section on the packaging where there were no logos along the base, so I really carefully unwrapped it and then tested it on my cardboard to see if it would fit, but I still had the logos on it a little bit, so I cut my cardboard just a little bit smaller and then tested it again, and we were able to get just gold and no Lipton logos on the cardboard piece. So I cut it out just below the logos to get that gold piece, made sure it would fit onto my little piece of cardboard, and it did. I also decided while my hot glue gun was heating up to rewrap my package of tea. I don't know why, it just kind of makes me happy when I make my tea in the morning to get it out of the gold foil package. I don't know why, I'm kind of weird like that. Anyways, I taped it back up and maybe it'll make the flavor stay really fresh, I don't know, but that's what I did. So then finally my glue gun was heated up and I glued the foil onto my little cardboard plaque and I just ran some hot glue along the side edge and then I kind of rolled the cardboard back as you can see in the video to hold it on there really well so that way I didn't have any glue on the front side so the front could be really smooth but then it would be held in place really nicely. So once I did the two long sides I did the same thing on the short ends where I just put a little bit of glue, folded it over to kind of round out the foil and make it look really nice and crisp, ended up like this and then it was time to write on it. And I wrote really sloppily and also way shifted off to the side. So I was fortunately able to unwrap the foil from the cardboard piece and then I used my scissors to cut the cardboard piece down smaller, re-glued it and it looked a little better. I may one day go back and make like a better plaque but it just kind of adds to the whole like, I'm DIYing my own play button. It just kind of goes with the whole feel of it. So anyways, I also then glued a toothpick to the base to make it stand up. And now it was time to finally throw everything together. So here is my paper mache rock basically that I made. I tested it if it would fit on the stand. And as you can see, it kind of left a gap. So I just cut the tips off on my stand 
and it fit on there very nicely after I did that. And so the last thing I had to do was add the actual play symbol to my play button. Again, I just used my hot glue gun to hot glue it into place and I just kind of slapped it in the middle, didn't really line it up, but I think I did a pretty good job getting the play button centered. And then it was time to put it all together on the stand with the little plaque. And here is my DIY paper mache, crochet, and cardboard YouTube play button. It's so beautiful. It's honestly kind of ugly, but I think the like ugliness of it also makes it beautiful. And it's just, I don't know, very fun. I had so much fun making this. But seriously, I just want to take a second and say thank you so much to everybody who watches my videos, who supports my channel, who comments and you subscribe and all this stuff. It really means so much to me because obviously I would never have reached this goal without your support. So I just want to say that I am so thankful for everyone who has helped me reach this goal. And thank you so much to everybody who's going to continue watching my videos help me reach the next milestone. You know, maybe when I hit like 10,000 or 50,000, I'll do an even more elaborate DIY YouTube play button. You'll have to let me know if you want to see that. If I ever reach there, hopefully we'll reach there. But anyways, thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. It really means a lot to me. Like I said, I wouldn't be able to do what I do without your support. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy crafting.